just natural peptide. It declines with age. The production ceases at age 74. That was pretty shocking. I just learned that about a year ago. And it has been posited, mostly by me and by Amy Wagers, that it's natural selection's uh, method to uh, control our lifespan. Basically, uh, GDF-11 repairs senescent stem cells. And uh, if, if, if you run out of it, your stem cell populations die. And I don't care what camp you're in, telomeres, rapamycin, whatever, you cannot survive without stem cells. So you run out of GDF-11, it's, uh, you can survive for a while, but the stem cell populations, the mesenchymal, hematopoietic stem cells die off, and it's game over. Uh, GDF-11 is a large molecule. It weighs 45,000 Daltons. It's 31 times the size of thyroid, seven times larger than insulin, and 1.8 times the size of growth hormone. So uh, it, has to be, uh, it has to be injected. Also, something else really fascinating about GDF-11, at least I think this is fascinating, its structure is conserved across all vertebrates. Uh, cat, GDF-11, human GDF-11, orangutan GDF-11, dog GDF-11, all exactly the same. That, that shows how important it is to life, like the structure cannot be screwed around with. So uh, I think that's a, a really cool aspect of it. The, here we go. That was, this is what everyone's been waiting for. These are my biomarkers. You say, okay, this guy's been on, on GDF-11 eight years. What happened to him? Well, my anti-aging doctor, Joe Raphael, he said, the only proof, thing you proved is you didn't die. <laughs> so, ah, thanks for the encouragement. Anyway, the, uh, this is, I, I, Raphael is a, a biomarker genius. He has the biomarkers of aging. It's a 100-page report of every system, you know, cardiac, neural, immune. You should come to New York and have it done. It costs a bit, it costs a bit of money, about 2,000 bucks, but... It's, it's, it's incredible, and he's been working on it 15 years, so I, I try to get all GF-11ers to take it. And um, you can see I got a lot of greed going on. That's good, and that's, those are all systems where I'm much younger. The stuff I'm really proud of, I actually got pretty emotional when I, when I got this, I, this sort of rad fest sort of made me get this done. I take care of everyone else's biomarkers, so I'm pretty bad on my own. But uh, anyway, I showed, a, I showed a, a cardio age of 35. I'm, I'm 64 and a half, by the way. This is a place where I like to say I'm actually older than I am, but I really am 64 and a half. And uh, <laughs> so, uh, thank you. A neural age of 42 and a pulmonary age of 41. And on the bottom, I can't really, uh, this is where these little monitors don't work so well. Okay, on the bottom, now how do you, how do you get to this? How, what biomarkers feed into these? This, this is called comparing systems of the biomarkers of aging report. What biomarkers drive this? Okay, the way to get your, I know all the, I know some of, most of the algorithms how it works. The way to get your uh, cardio age down is to have low augmentation pressure. So in 2014, this is eight years ago, okay? This is not, this is not yesterday, this is a long time ago. Obama was president, okay? This is a long time ago. Eight years ago, I was five, it went down to four. You say, oh, big deal, well, that's 20% reduction. Just keep in mind that anyone else, if I had a twin brother, which I wish I did, that would be great for my research. I wouldn't, I wouldn't give him any GDF-11. Just say, uh, you know, you go, just, just uh, go eat cheeseburgers and, and let's see what happens here. So uh, <laughs> anyway, uh, I went down 20%. And that's enough. That's a huge... I mean, if they do factor in blood pressure and pulse. My resting pulse is 55. Blood pressure is, you know, the normal 120, 80. But my elasticity is really low. So I get a cardio age of 35. That's pretty good. Now here, this is the one I'm really proud of. Uh, reaction time. Now, these are raw scores. The CNS vital signs test, they actually, you know, they grade the curve and, and when you're uh, uh, older, they, they cut you slack and all. This is, these are raw scores, not adjusted for age. And I went from 914 to 847. That's down 8% in eight years. You know what it would be for my twin brother? I'd be up at least a percent a year. Uh, probably, you know, a percent and a half a year. So you, I got a delta here of about 20%. That's That's... It, believe me, take my word for it, this is a, a, an incredible cognitive biomarker. You want to keep it low at all costs. Absolute naives, up 133%. That gave me a immuno age. That's not great, 57, but I'll take it. As I said, most of these things head north, no matter what you do. C-reactive -reacti C protein. This is Bill Falloon's favorite biomarker. And you can see 2014, this pre-GDF11. I was pretty bad, man. I was, must be all the uh, onion rings and 
God knows what else. But now I'm 0.6. And that figures into, um, uh, uh, oh, am I done? Oh, shh. <laughs> Sorry. Oh, I just want to show um, this one. Uh, this is uh, Alfred. He's uh, 94 years old from Kent, England. And I uh, just want to show that he, uh, he's, he's my hero. He's 30 years older than me. And he's done, he's done uh, incredibly well on GDF. That's huge. Verbal memory, visual memory up 65%. Neurocognition up 16%. That's the whole kahuna. Merged together, mostly reaction type, visual acuity improved. And uh, this is his sleep for the last four months. It's really important here. Yeah, he's sleeping an hour. You get an hour or more deep sleep at night. That means more uh, cell proliferation repair activity. That's what happens during deep sleep. You want to maximize that. Uh, how he dose GDF 11. Uh, in the last eight years, I've run a GDF 11 study and successfully dosed uh, hundreds of people. And, and dogs and cats, so I, I know how to dose it uh, pretty well. Uh, the GDF-11 dose is carefully uh, titrated, adjusted to key biomarkers such as heart rate variability, pulse, and breast per minute. Uh, like insulin or thyroid, I do think GDF-11 will eventually be classified as a hormone. And like insulin or thyroid, there's only a very narrow window in which it works. Okay, you take too little, it doesn't do anything. You take too much, you get side effects. Just like the side effects, not as bad as the side effects of, uh, oh, look, the slides are right there. Ooh, well, hey, at a, at a clock. Uh oh. <laughs> well, it pays to look straight ahead. Okay. Well, I could actually read that too. So, okay, insulin dose is tight. Uh, <laughs> insulin dose is titrated to blood glucose levels. Thyroid dose is uh, titrated to T4, thyroxine and TSH, uh, thyroid stimulating hormone. You would not dose insulin or thyroid hormone without expert supervision and biomarker feedback. GDF-11 dosing is similar. Uh, you cannot achieve optimal dosing without proper biomarker feedback. Please treat it with respect. If I said, oh, you're going to dinner, here's, here's a vial of insulin, you know, take a little before dinner, maybe a little after dinner, you say, well, that's nuts. Well, GDF-11 is, is just as powerful. So uh, it needs to be treated with respect and uh, you, you can run into trouble with it. There are side effects like arrhythmia. Okay, the seven observable mechanisms of action of GDF-11. Uh, uh, the first, the high level one is stem cell DNA repair. Uh, but it, 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 over the last eight years, we've seen, and there's all papers backing all this up, by the way. Uh, we've seen it, it does an extensive cardiac repair and ethereal repair, increased blood flow to the brain. You're gonna like that one. That's all about memory and uh, reaction time, immune enhancement, It'll up your NKs and the naive Ts. Hox gene activation, it shrinks the BPH, cardiohypertrophy. Senolytic, it has to be a senolytic. It's all about cell proliferation. Tumor surveillance eradication. That's the one I've really done a lot of work on in the last three years. Uh, it's a very powerful anti-cancer mechanism. I've cured a lot of cats and dogs of cancer, and I'm sure humans are just around the corner. Okay, just a little bit of a editorializing. Uh, let's all be biomarker activists. Uh, I think one of the problems with this industry is that people don't take, uh, don't report biomarker evidence of the effectiveness of senolytics, rapamycin, whatever. It, it, there's a lot of biomarkers, and some of them are very, very expensive. But taking the big four, blood pressure, uh, pulse, HRV, and reaction time, it doesn't cost you anything really. Well, you put an infant under your bed, it does HRV and pulse, and uh, it's, it's very inexpensive. You can't, if you can't significantly impact the big four, then it's time for a new regimen. And I'll tell you something else. If you can keep these the same for 10 years, which I have done, you're, you're, uh, you're greatly slowing aging. Okay, let's go through the seven mechanisms of action. Uh, number one is uh, cardiac repair uh, for the uh, cohort, which is over 100 people. Average heart rate variability uh, up 21%, almost 22% due to cardiac remodeling. Uh, I don't know if a lot of you know HRV, but it's a great biomarker. It's easy to take. I mean, everything takes it now, the order ring, the Apple Watch. So uh, it's a great measure of cardiac fitness and overall health. Uh, average blood pressure down 5.7% as you age, you know, BP goes up. Uh, average pulse down 6.3%. Average augmentation pressure, this is a little bit more difficult to measure. I actually have one of these machines. I have a whole 
biomarker lab at home. That's how seriously I take this stuff. But I have one of these machines, and this measures arterial elasticity. And uh, that, that measures the hardening of the arteries, and it's down 60.7%. Uh, okay, this is a, all, the, all GDF lenders get an MFIT that goes under their bed. It's a very sophisticated research device. It measures pulse and sleep and HRV and a bunch of other things. And you can see with this guy here, before GDF 11, you can see the uh, pulse range is very high, in the, in, which is not good. You want, you want a narrow pulse range when you're, you're sleeping. And then he starts on the GDF 11, and the pulse range shrinks. That white line is resting pulse. That's another great biomarker. You can see it was very high. It starts on the GDF 11, it comes down to 40. So he's looking really good. But the reason I'm showing this is this guy, he actually, uh, he moved. And he didn't take his GDF 11 for a month. So all of a sudden you can see the uh, uh, resting heart rate come up. You can see over there the range uh, gets much larger. Fortunately, after about a month, he restarts on the GDF 11 and everything returns to normal. So you can see how powerful it is. Things happen very quickly. You have to stay on it the rest of your life. But big deal. You get, it, once you're in the maintenance dose, you can do that you know, a couple times a month. And to feel your repair, uh, if you got plaque, we're, uh, we're the guys to come to. Uh, we reverse many cases of plaque. This is a CIMT scan. You can see on the left, the, uh, the guy's got plenty of plaque. And then on the right, it's uh, all cleared. And you could do a little bit of, of plaque clearing with diet, but nothing on this level. Okay, this is one of my favorites. Increased blood flow to the brain. Average GDF-11 reaction time goes down 12.5%. There is nothing here at Bradfist or on this planet that can lower reaction time. And I'll stand by that statement. Anybody wants to take me to task on that, that's cool because I know what I'm talking about here. Reaction time is a very sad biomarker of aging. It just gets worse and worse and worse as you age. That's, that's the very depressing graph of reaction time. After 50, it gets really bad. So you got to do something about that. So uh, uh, anyway, reaction time is, is more than just playing good video games or, or avoiding car accidents. It's a very good indicator of overall cognitive health. Um, so it's, uh, I've never seen somebody with dementia or Alzheimer's that uh, has a, a, you know, a bad reaction time. I mean, they all have bad reaction time, it has good reaction time. So GDF-11 is the only known peptide uh, regimen that can lower uh, reaction time. It's a biomarker that I'm very, very into, and you all, it's easy to take. You just take, take it every day on the computer, humanbenchmark.com. Take you no time. It takes you 30 seconds a day. Okay, immune competency, super important. Uh, the mechanism of action behind this is more hu active hematopoietic cells, you know, making uh, more naive T cells and natural killers. And you can see everybody, the most important uh, immune cell is naive Ts. Uh, these are the cells that, that uh, figure out uh, COVID and new pathogens and program the immune system to uh, mount a response. And uh, I'm patient zero. In eight years, I went from 36 to 84. It's pretty good, 133% up. But you still, look at the guy who's age 33. He's still way, way, way ahead of me. So uh, it is correlated with age. It's another sad biomarker that you really can't do anything about. And once you fall below 10, you know, you're in deep trouble. Then you're, you're a walking candidate for uh, pneumonia. And, and uh, that's why I say if nothing else gets you, immunosenescence will. Ask Jack LaLanne. That guy did, that guy did everything right. He, he died of pneumonia at uh, age 95. Didn't, didn't address his uh, naive T's. Hox gene reactivation. Okay. This is, uh, these are genes that control the size and shape of our organs. Um, we're very good at uh, reversing benign prostatic hypertrophy, BPH. Um, the first sign you have it is you get up a lot in the middle of the night to, to go to the bathroom. This is for men, obviously. And uh, we had one guy that was uh, hospitalized for it, was treated with uh, uh, catheters, and I don't really want to go into it. But anyway, within a month, he was, uh, he was fine. So the mechanism of action, action here, and there's a couple papers on this. All this is backed up, by the way, with papers. So it, I'm not making any of this up. I'm just, I'm just reporting the human biomarkers for you. Mechanism of action is believed to be switching on the Hox genes, which control the size of our organs. Okay, this is pretty cool. I know everybody loves Sanalytics. 
Well, GDF 11 is probably the most powerful sentinel that there is. It has to be. It's about cell proliferation. You got more hematopoietic cells making more NKs and naive Ts and leukocytes and lymphocytes. You got to have something on the other end, or, or put it unscientifically, you'd explode. Okay, so. Uh, GF11 fed mice, you see, have a 45% reduction in senescent liver cells, 21.7% uh, reduction in senescent kidney cells. So it's a very powerful antioxidant. It's endogenous. You have it in you. It's not a cancer drug. And uh, I think that we're going to, for future GDF 11ers, they're all going to take uh, Dr. Shea's uh, uh, SAB gal uh, test. And I'll, next RADFest, I'll let you know about this. Okay, now let's talk about the anti-cancer uh, capabilities. Um, you know, we have a GF 11 -er. His name is Buzz. He's here. And about three years ago, he said, my son's dog has hemangiosarcoma. And I go, hemangio, what is that? And he says, well, you know, it's a cancer of the uh, blood cells, uh, blood, ves blood vessels. And it's very deadly. Dogs very rarely make it beyond three months. And he said, can I give a GF 11 to the dog. I said, yeah, let me work up an allometric dose, which is basically just adjusting the dose for dog's height and surface area. And uh, we started injecting with GDF-11, and uh, it, within a two months, all his tumors were gone. Yeah, yeah. so uh, this is an endogenous substance. Yes, thank you. So three years later, Dexter is cancer-free. He's, yeah, good Dex, man. This, this dog is, and he's running around. Of course, these dogs de-age from the GDF-11, so he's running around. He's got a great coat. He's the oldest living hemangiosarcoma dog in the world. Yeah, so, uh, so anyway, I'm like, oh, wow, that was pretty cool. I mean, you know. Hey, let me just say, Steve's not only a very intelligent, nice person, but eight years ago, at Harvard, the mice had no, cho no choice about the needle being stuck into him with GDF-11. Yeah. Thank you, Buzz. My publicist. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So it was Buzz's idea. This was not my idea. And I think, I bet you 10 years from now, you know, we're curing 100,000 people a year for, uh, with GDF 11, thanks, thanks to Buzz uh, thinking way, way outside the box. So, uh, also, I love cats, so we got to spend some time on cats. I, uh, I have two myself. They're both on uh, GDF-11. They're doing great. They're going to make it to 30. Uh, this cat uh, had lymphoma. This is the first lymphoma cat we tried. It just goes to show you that uh, GDF-11 works basically at all cancers. And, uh, yeah, he's, he's, uh, he's doing great. It was cured within a couple of months. Uh, no more, uh, you know, they usually have the mandibular lymph nodes and the polylipidal lymph nodes and boom, we shrunk those and the cat's finally is going to go on to be the oldest cat in the world. Okay, what, what is the mechanism of action here? Now, you know, everybody says they can cure cancer. Thank God, I got a great paper you can read. It's on Wikipedia. It's called GDF-11 Implications in Cancer Biology and Metabolism. And it's in the Journal of Nature. So this is pretty credible stuff. Uh, they, they figured it out on mice, I figured it out on humans and dogs. Anyway, the best line of the paper is a blunt fact regarding GDF11 biology is that its target uh, cells have stemless features, okay? Once again, the stem cell aspect comes in that can be found in, in, in cancer cells. So uh, the way GDF11 works, it actually binds to the cells with stemless features and it suffocates them. It literally suffocates, destroys their mitochondrial function, boom, the, cell, the cancer cell is dead. And we know this paper is true because the dose we have figured out is correlated with, with tumor load. A dog or a cat that has a, a lot of tumors will need a thousand times, a thousand times what we take just because the tumor load is so high. So that, that, this paper is true on mice, and I think we've pretty much proven it to be true in dogs and cats, and I think humans are just around the corner. Okay, here's our... our our uh, scoreboard, we've cured uh, 12 dogs of sarcoma, two of lymphoma, uh, one of lung cancer, one of a cancer I can't pronounce, histiocytic sarcoma, uh, insulinoma. Dogs with insulinoma, that's pretty interesting. It's in the, in the eyelids of the Langerhorn. They secrete massive amounts of insulin, but that dog's fine too. Anyway, uh, 
It most likely work against all cancers because all cancers, as far as GDF11 are concerned, exhibit, stand, uh, exhibit stemness. And when you think about long-lived species, natural selection has to have a mechanism for controlling stemness. You know, I mean, bowhead whales live 250 years, and you've never seen a bowhead whale in a cancer clinic, right?